The Garden of Eden, which is spoken about in the Bible, is still here on Earth right now. It's also associated with the tallest mountain on Earth, which is not Mount Everest. You see, they have hidden from us the biggest mountain in the world, which is also the holy mountain of God, Mount Zion. We have all believed that unlike the South Pole, there is no land on the North Pole. However, all of the earliest NASA satellite photos have a black hole in the middle of the North Pole, meaning something is being hidden from us. It's the Garden of Eden and Mount Zion. It is believed that the North Pole was discovered in 1909, however. There are maps from the 1500s which depict the North Pole. The maps show four pieces of land broken up by four rivers. In the middle of the lands is a whirlpool with a mountain in the center. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? This is exactly how the Bible describes Mount Zion and the Garden of Eden. What's even weirder is that the Book of Enoch, the only book to be removed from the Bible, describes the mountain exactly as the ancient maps have drawn it. So what do you think? Well, I think that Christians are trying to stretch reality and make it fit into their cosmology. That's what I think. So the first thing, let's go ahead and talk about Eden for a second. The Garden of Eden is not an original story by the Hebrew Bible. The Garden of Eden in Chaldea was originally a story that was spoken of by the Sumerians. That Enlil and Enkian and Harsag and Anu, once they created Adapa and Titi, man, uh, from their own image by adding their DNA, they placed them in an enclosure. That's what Eden means in the Sumerian language. And that enclosure was in Chaldea, which was in Sumeria, which was in the Levant, Mesopotamia. So the fact that you're claiming that it's in the North Pole is a violation of nature in the sense that a garden would not exist at no time in the North Pole. Now, the only way that that would be in possibility is that in and around 12,000 years ago, or 8,000 years ago, there would have to have been a pole shift. And that pole shift then would have moved the Levant, the Garden of Eden, up to the North Pole. We have no indication of a pole shift happening during that time frame. We do have indication of the Young Adrias Flood happening around, I said 12,000 years ago, adding our 2,000, be about 14,000 years ago. And we're looking at 12,000, 13,000 BCE. But there's no indication of a pole shift happening during that time frame. And if a pole shift had happened, then there would be no monuments like the pyramids in Giza or the Sphinx that would have been able to survive it. Those would have crumbled during a pole shift. Although the movie 2012 was a phantasm, a, a fictional movie, it did show what type of destruction would have happened on the planet if a pole shift had actually occurred. So no monuments, no existence of civilizations would have been able to survive um, the rim and we'd be able to find the remnants of that in the way that we still have them where they're above ground and they're still solid and that sort of thing so no now the other problem with this whole thing is that the four rivers the tigers the euphrates the um the tigers euphrates and the pison is the river the, i know the pison is the river that they cannot find and there was another river i can't think of the name of it right now those rivers, we know where the Euphrates is. We know the, where the Tigris is. We, they still don't know where the Pison is. Some say that it's in Saudi Arabia, that it's a dried riverbed. Some say that it's under the Persian Gulf. Uh, but we have absolutely no idea right now where those rivers are. But we do know where the Euphrates and the Tigris rivers are. The other aspect of this is the NASA photos. Those NASA photos were taken at a time frame when one of the biggest holes in the ozone layers was above the North Pole. And this is not uh, something that happens rarely. This is something that happens normally. And it happens on the North Pole and the South Pole. So for those who don't know what the ozone layer is, the ozone layer is a layer of our atmosphere that keeps the more harmful radiation from the sun away from us. Uh, keeps us from dying because those holes in the ozone layer would literally irradiate those areas. And we wouldn't be able to survive in those areas or we would be subject to mass amounts of radiation, cause sickness, and so on and so forth. I remember in the 90s when ozone layer, holes in the ozone layer was a big thing. 
And if you read the Sumerian story, then one of the things that you learn is that the reason they came to Earth was for the mining of gold so that they can fix the holes in their ozone layer on the planet Nibiru. And by spraying the monatomic gold in the atmosphere, it would then be able to reflect those harmful solar radiation uh, that was coming through. Now, we also have images, NASA has also claimed and had said and have images where there are no holes in, in the North Pole because those holes are closed. So therefore, they are taking something that is a natural occurrence and are making it out to be something that would fit their paradigm of what Eden is and that NASA, again, is uh, creating an entire uh, fake story to trick us into not understanding this, um, that that's where the Garden of Eden was. Now, although we don't have as much exploration of the South Pole as we do the North Pole, many people have explored the North Pole regions and what they have never found there was the Garden of Eden. What they have never found there was a mountain that was higher than Mount Everest. Mount Everest still is the highest uh, mountain that's above water, above sea level on the planet. Uh, one of the mountains in Hawaii is actually the tallest mountain on the planet. But m the overwhelming majority of that mountain is underwater. So therefore it is not included as far as what is the tallest mountains, mountain in the world because most of it being on the water. So Everest is still the highest mountain. Uh, this is a completely fictitious story that someone created in order to get people to believe in more wild conspiracies and they actually, there's more proof against it than there is proof for it. But in order to confirm their bias of Christianity and since there are so many Christians in the world, they know that Christians will buy into almost anything to try to validate their religion uh, and this is just happens to be one of those things. So just to reiterate, there hasn't been a pole shift. The Garden of Eden was an older story told before the Hebrews ever even knew about this and they borrowed it from the Sumerians. The Garden of Eden is a place called Edom in Chaldea. And the fact that this is just holes in the ozone layer caused by the solar radiation because those solar radiations were not allow for anything to pass through and let me show you this one picture do you notice in this picture how uh, in that hole it looks like the center of a hurricane because when the ozone layer in the north pole is damaged or is not being protected from the solar radiation it creates a cold vortex and that cold vortex basically creates a winter hurricane in the North Pole and if you look at the swirlings it looks exactly like a hurricane and the hole being the eye of the hurricane and in that eye it's just heavy radiation because the ozone layer is thin there so it's not what this guy is claiming it to be it's totally a naturally occurring event that happens over and over and over again and guess what it'll keep happening over and over again so if you want to find the Garden of Eden there, go up there and take some pictures. Go up there and make a video and show us that this is the Garden of Eden and that's how the North Pole is shaped and that there's a big ass mountain up there. Until you do that, then this is all just made up BS in order to push a Christian narrative. So y'all have a great day. And remember always, you gotta free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey.